Now, you mentioned a moment ago about reversion to the mean. That's That comes up, I think, in this next question. What happens to gold and silver stocks in the event of a stock market crash? Will they react in a contrarian way as gold does, or do they crash with the market? They crash with the market. Gold and silver stocks are stocks. And in a market crash, uh, the tertiary assets, the most marginal assets, decrease the most. And there is no asset in the world more marginal <laughs> than a junior mining share. Stocks are stocks. I remember in the 1987 crash, gold and gold equities held up for precisely 24 hours. <laughs> and then they followed the market lower. Even gold uh, will be impacted, although gold will come back sooner. What happens in a crash is that the sell decision isn't made by the investor. It's made by the margin clerk. And the margin clerk doesn't care what you think about the relative value of your holdings are. They sell whatever has a bid to extinguish the debt to the house. Investors need to understand that in really precipitous declines, liquidity related uh, declines, there are no safe shelters. The Investment categories that hold value recover the fastest, but in the immediate aftermath of a crash, there are no safe shelters with the exception of cash. This next question I think also has to do with both the reversion to mean as well as this east-west di dichotomy that we've been seeing in terms of the flows of physical precious metals and the relative pricing on different exchanges. Uh, it says, what would it take to stop the artificial suppression of gold and silver prices? And we've talked about that in the past. There's a, there's a follow on question by another listener. What would it take to stop the artificial suppression of gold and silver prices? And do you think it will happen in the next two years? Yes, Rick, I've been patient for the last 12 years. <laughs> well, if they've been patient for the last 12 years, they've been rewarded. Uh, I look back and I began to materially increase my own holdings uh, of gold in 1998, two years too quick. But if we go 2000 to 2024, we see a move in the gold price from $250 to $2,100. 8.6, 8.7% compounded a year for 24 years. I would ask investors who complain about that uh, to give their head a shake. Gold has done precisely what I asked it to do. It's maintained my purchasing power. So when the gentleman says he's being patient, I need to say, really? What were your expectations? <laughs> I, I'm not one of those who believes in any ongoing uh, multi-decade manipulation. I believe that uh, lower real and marginal gold and silver prices over 40 years had more to do with the strength of the U.S. dollar and the perception, at least, that savers were enjoying real interest yields on U.S. dollar denominated deposits than anything else. Why would you bother manipulating something that was going lower? Uh, you know, why would you try to suppress something that was falling of its own volition? Uh, I believe that the outlook changed in 2022 when what I believe was the real rate of inflation began to substantially exceed the yield available on U.S. dollar denominated instruments at the same time that the risk associated with those instruments increased. I note that in the period 1967 to 1972, the circumstance was the same and the market didn't care. But after five years, when the market did care, it cared in earnest. Now, as a follow on with regards to manipulation, all markets are manipulated in the near term, gold being no exception. Markets as big as the LIBOR market uh, and the U.S. Treasury market are manipulated in the very near term. And they are always manipulated in the direction that it is the easiest for the manipulators to manipulate. Uh, when gold markets begin to rise, it will be easier to manipulate those markets up, which occurred in my memory in the 1970s. For the last 40 years, the easy way to manipulate them is down. Uh, when you have a market, and I think we've talked about this before, Dunnigan, where the futures market is so much larger than the physical market, the temptation to short-term manipulation is particularly intense. Uh, it is not uncommon for the silver futures markets to trade 200 times the volume of silver available for good delivery in a day. <laughs> so uh, a manipulator could establish a short ladder if he or she expected the silver price to be more likely to decline, 
a short ladder involving a billion or a billion and a half dollars uh, in stages from three months out to two years, uh, and then borrow a fair amount of physical, which they dumped in the overnight market when the volumes were the least and where the damage they could do was the most, uh, and then enjoy the change that they had affected in the spot market and its outsize impact in the futures market. Uh, and, and I think that happens probably on a quarterly basis. There's no other explanation for very large selling of gold and silver in the overnight markets when the volumes are the skinniest. Uh, a rational seller would be trying to maximize his or her yield on sale. In this particular instance, whoever the seller is, is trying to maximize their impact in the futures market. I would suggest that this is not the trilateral commission or the international Jewish conspiracy or the Fed. I would suspect that these are organized cabals around the trading desks of major international banks, the same people who manipulated the treasury market, the same people who uh, manipulated the LIBOR market, the same people who manipulated the euro, the euro dollar market. There's uh, we've been talking about there's one more type of uh, government intrusion we haven't talked about in this interview, and that's about potential for confiscation and seizure, it's nationalization, et cetera. Uh, and other, other uh, ch channels have also been uh, reporting recently about Switzerland agreeing to confiscate Russian assets. What does Rick think about storing metals in vaults in a financial meltdown? Is there a risk of confiscation in Switzerland? Are private vaults safe, etc.? I think it depends on the vault. Uh, I think a bigger risk that people face in a bull market, a bigger risk than confiscation, is entrusting gold and silver to marginal vaults. Uh, if you're going to put money in a vault, make sure that the vault is controlled by a public company where you can see their balance sheet and their income statement. Make sure that the vault is subject to an outside audit every 90 days. It is so easy for the government to steal from you via taxation, via regulation, via inflation, via quantitative easing, that they have no need to steal your bullion. Uh a tax increase or an excise tax <laughs> or printing up $2 trillion out of thin air is a kind of theft which is absolutely legal and, by the way, is always applauded by the voters. Why would Congress subject themselves to the ire of a populace that has 400 million guns in private holdings when they could steal much more very easily in a way that's very popular with the voters?